Let's talk about Canada because you chose to live outside of Canada, which gives you a perspective on who we are. You are Canadian, but you have, are looking at us from the outside, so to speak. Uh, yeah. Who are we here? <laughs> I know we're, I have to have a sense of irony to be Canadian, but we're small. Who are we that we cannot make an own, our own star system, that you have to go away? Who are we that we won't put money into taking an actor of your stature and saying, yes, there should be a television miniseries based on The Tempest? Well, uh, it's, it's very confusing because Canadians are, are an intelligent race, actually. When I see the theater here, go to the theater here, other than in America and, and other certain places, the audiences here are very intelligent. It is, the education is better, really, generally speaking in this country than it is in America, in the States. And you get a far more informed audience than, than you do in, in the States. And I'm not, the first three weeks in New York of any play, the Konyashenti come, you know, so we don't count them. But here, the, the level of intelligence remains for a much longer period of time. And that's very exciting. Um, they, the public want it. Politicians are notoriously uninterested in the arts, possibly because they never, although they must have had some money or they wouldn't have gone into politics, but they obviously never had a fully rounded education. <laughs> they never learnt. They never had a romantic education as well as all the other. And uh, <coughs> so you really can't blame the poor buggers. And they will go and see basketball and hockey before they will go and see the theater. Or, so we have to somehow encourage them to always be up their backsides to persuade them that the arts are, are very important. There was something in the paper this morning about, again, about, it was about, I think, Bradshaw, Richard Bradshaw, who runs the opera company, who said, who reminded us that great civilizations were not made by politicians. They were made by the country's cultural vibrancy. And uh, that what is it about words, us, no do you think, Chris? I, well, I th I, all I'm saying is about us that there, we, we, there, that there is a great opportunity here because if, if we could, as, a, as an intelligent race, which we are, could persuade our powers that be that that uh, we've got to uh, we've got to support the arts more than, and I think collectively we should do that but we're shy and we are reticent and the country is, has always had a tough time probably because of climate I don't know um, raising the um, the level of of arts, uh, it used to be thought of as church basement. Remember, it was always something you didn't do professionally. It was, again, you said it earlier, the pre Presbyterianism and, and the Calvinism of the people, in a sense, over the years. But they're better than that now. They know that um, we are being recognized much more. Films are being made here because of a tax thing. That's one thing that's good. So it's brought a lot of people to Canada made Canadians more aware that we're just as good making films as anybody else is, really. But still, you have to live in the United States. Well, Come no, back. I don't uh, have to live in the United States. But, but I, I went because, don't forget, when I started out, there was nothing else. There was no film industry here. In fact, I think I did one of the early Canadian movies, a thing called The Pick. The Picks in Montreal at the end of the 60s. That was one of the early English Canadian movies. Right, and uh, there, there was no. When I left in the fifties, I radio was still great. Then it closed down. Television was just rearing its ugly head here, and I zapped out because after the, there was no Stratford when I left. Mm -hmm. So I had to go. But I'm, I'm and I would want to go anyway because running away from home is terribly <laughs> important. You don't learn anything unless you do run away from home. And then when you bring it back, you've brought back some sort of knowledge and wisdom and 
that that's the way you serve your country. But, I mean, <laughs> but unfortunately, Canadians always think that because you left, you deserted them. Sons of bitches. I, or you knew something about us that we should oh, be finding out God, and you got out. so you know? tedious, that problem, that provincial attitude. But we, have, we look at Quebec, and Quebec is a closed, a, a more closed culture because they're French-speaking, and whatever is it, seven, eight million people. Yeah. And they generate a sense of arts amongst themselves that yeah. we in English Canada, Canada envy. They generate yeah. a recognition of talent within their province that we envy. We, in a much larger part of Canada, can't do that. They can, and they're even in even smaller Yes, industries. because they're probably, it's because they are smaller, I think, and they really have been ignored by their mother country so, so badly that they just decided to hell with it. We'll, we, are, we now are what we are. France has, has snubbed them for so long, and they are now what they are. Right. And... Uh, we don't know what we are still. That's what I said earlier, yet. So we're still floundering between the British and the American um, influence.